that metal interview. When you speak of death metal pioneers, when you speak of the inventors of death metal, a lot of us think of Possessed. A lot of us think of Chuck Schuldner of death. Of course, it's between those two. There's a toss up there, I believe. When, of course, when you speak of the inventors of death metal, of course. Uh, on this episode of that metal interview, uh, we will be speaking exclusively with Mr. Jeff Becerra of the band Possessed. We had the pleasure of speaking with him, the legend himself. And he speaks of all those subjects right there. And I believe I'm a fan myself of death metal and uh, rock history, metal history. And I believe this guy came up with, he came up with uh, death metal himself. Shoulder apparently hung out with uh, Jeff and you'll hear him talk about it. And then uh, Chuck later on, he made his own death metal with death, of course. Scream bloody gore and all that stuff. But before all that came around, there was Possessed. For everybody that does not know that. So, here is our interview with the legendary legend of all legends of death metal, Mr. Jeff Becerra. Enjoy. How's it going, man? How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing good. Just trying to get comfortable so I can talk to you. Speaking of legends and death metal legends, it is my pleasure and an honor speaking to you. Thank you for making time. <laughs> that just means I'm old. <laughs> Let's start off with your musical influences. Uh, if you can speak about, talk to us about your musical influences when you were young. You know, honestly, I got into the scene, the hardcore scene, a uh, lot of punk bands, you know, like around the SFA area. And then, but uh, I was pretty much introduced to, uh, like, the extreme metal through, uh, you know, Gary Holt, Exodus, and the SF Underground, which was just teaming with bands back in the day, you know, for a pretty bump. You know, uh, I mean, we were pretty early on, but, uh, but uh, there was an exodus, and then, uh, you know, Metallica came down, and then, um, you know, all the, like, Testament, Heathen, and Mordred, and, you know, and then, uh, 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 oh my god, uh, and she's just ran, and, um, and, uh, oh my god, you know, all the Dust Death Bay Area Underground bands. And, yeah. uh, but mostly, you know, um, to be honest, uh, you know, I got in, I started out with that, like hearing like the mentions of Lucifer and like UFO and Black Sabbath and you know ACDC and then you know I started hearing bands like Motorhead and, and Exodus and, and and then punk bands especially and I kind of just mixed those together and, and I like I liked that I was always searching for that heavier heavier sound and realized that like I, I really couldn't get it unless I made it myself you know. Those are all great bands you just mentioned. All, all badass fucking bands. Everybody should have stopped shy of where I wanted to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like everybody was just like, you know, they would get their toe in the, in the water to say this and that, but they'd never just go balls out, you know? And, and uh, you know, I think um, when I heard uh, Venom the first time, they, I, I really, you know, and then like Merciful Fate, I was like, okay, see, see, this makes sense. And then, so I kind of wanted to just bring that kind of Satanism, overt Satanism, and then the, the speed of trash that I always kind of like, there was always a pause or a break. It, it, it was never just balls out, you know. And I guess back in the day, what what, what we did was, was the equivalent to the blast beat before the blast beat. You know, we just put, instead of having that skippy thrash time, we just went straight straight fast, you know, like the, like the hardest on the power drops and, and makes that to metal. And, and I guess that was kind of revolutionary back then. As everybody knows, Possessed has been coined 
as the first death metal band, the inventors of death metal, and in my opinion, the godfathers of death metal. Just like Tony Iommi, to me, is uh, the inventor of metal, I believe Possessed is the inventor and the first, the first man to play death metal. How do you feel about that? Is that correct? Yeah, it's definitely correct. I mean, it was intentional. We knew that, you know, Exorcist had thrash, you know, Exorcist and Metallica had thrash metal. We knew that Venom had black metal. And, you know, we had, there was speed metal. And, and we wanted our own thing, you know. We wanted something to call our own. So um, I wrote a song called Death Metal. But even before that, the music was something completely different. So we knew that we had to title it because it was, it was just that. It was different. It was Apple so one just different. It was way heavier and way faster. And it was something, it was something different. Obviously different. And uh, back then, like, I think it's easy to say that Possessed was the heaviest band on the planet. You know, because, you know, like I'm telling you, there was nothing out there like it. And uh, so I thought that Possessed would be, like, I wrote a song called Death Metal, which we started branding ourselves as Death Metal. This is in you know, 82, 83. Our, the first copyright of Death Metal was in 83, so way before anybody else. And, uh, and, um, but, you know, the media wasn't having it. They kept, like, trying to step on our necks and, oh, you're thrash metal or you're Slayer Cops. But, yeah. you know, we wrote our song, we wrote our shit before Slayer's first album. So we're not copying anybody. We just, everybody just wanted to, nobody, nobody wanted to recognize we were doing something different. And so it was always like a struggle. It, was a really, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a good thing. But, but initially I thought that, like, Possessed would be the only death metal band on the planet. And then people would say, oh, Possessed, that's that death metal band, right? Right. And so I never knew it was death, but, you know, very quickly other bands started taking off and uh, and, and um, catching on to what we were doing. It spread like wildfire. So, you know, but for almost a year, we were the only death metal band, uh, band on the planet. And then there was Genius, and then, you know, uh, you know some other bands probably, probably stayed in the public death. And, uh, you know, a whole bunch of bands after that, so. So, was Chuck Schuldner and Death after Possessed? Did they come after you as far as uh, the subject of the inventors of Death Metal? Oh, yeah, definitely. Chuck actually came down and lived with us at the Possessed uh, club president's house in Antioch. Yeah. You know, he started corresponding with us, uh, you know, via letters, and then, um, you know, like phone calls. And he actually moved down to the fan club house to be nearer to what we were doing. Oh. Yeah, he used to go over there and he'd like quiz me, like, you know, what, you know, what is death metal? What is, you know, what, 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 what do you do here? What do you do there? And then and we were like really, really tight friends, you know. And, and uh, you know, he actually, you know, he was probably the first person to really just you know, be enamored with what I took really look up to me like as a musician and I, I was honored, you know, it was really cool. I know Chuck um formed Death in Florida, I believe. Uh so Chuck was in California also? Well he moved to the Possessed Fan Club house at Crystal's house in Antioch in California and then when when uh Crystal moved to Florida, Chuck moved with her to Florida. Yeah, okay. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah, uh, but he he stayed at the Possessed Man Club President's house. Really? Yeah, I remember when we went over the, the beginnings of Street by the Gore, he, he came up to me and was like, This is Jeff, I sound just like you. He was all like happy. And he was proud of that. And I was proud for him and I was proud of him. And, and of course, you know, Chuck doesn't need to be, but he used a monster to his own. So he uh, really kind of like took it in a whole new direction. He made death battle into so much more than, you know, just, it takes so much more than just possessed to make a genre. And so I think that was the beginning step. So it was possessed and death. And that was the, the, the first two primal steps in the direction of, of, of death metal actually becoming a genre. A very awesome story, man. Yeah. Quite an honor, really. Oh, Chuck was a great guy. He was so cool. Do you think Chuck stole or borrowed some ideas from you? 
Uh, I think he got a lot of ideas. I think he got the whole idea of death metal from us. Yeah. But I don't think it was sort of skimming because it was offered freely. Yeah. Yeah. I understand you played bass and vocals at first. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I played uh, bass. Well, you know, Larry started off first in like 1979. And uh, when we were kids, 1978, 1979, I was like 11 years old. And me and Larry Lalonde, and when we started a band called Marauder, and then we turned Blizzard. You know, in many ways, Possessed was an extension of Blizzard because, um, uh, you know, uh, we were, I played with um, Larry um, and Blizzard for, you know, since all through like junior high, and high school, beginning of high school, like, like in the first part of that three, then I got kicked out because I wanted to go heavier, and they wanted to go, they were like playing. On a spin off and a grateful dead shit. I was like, fuck this. <laughs> so I went and um, I, I, uh, I was approached by, uh, shortly after I was approached by Mike and Mike at school, and they, they asked me to come check them out, and that's when we started Possessed. And we initially got by in Montana on guitar, but for some reason, Mike uh, Trailer didn't get along. He's a Mike Mike. Uh, by Montana so uh, you know I didn't have anything wrong with Brian but I wanted to go back and get Larry so and, and remember with the old Blizzard Debbie Amaro managed us too so whenever I got kicked out they made a big deal out of it they were like uh, just you know you're out you're out of the band and this is your equipment because it's ours now and, and you're out and so I was like I was really fucking hurt upset so in order to get revenge I went I went and talked to Bubby and I said, yo, yo, I we were like an album contract or we got a child uh, what a metal master six. I had had more play and, and Larry was always kind of up where he would move where you know the best options were. And so um he agreed to join. But uh one of the conditions is that, you know, Blizzard just had to stop managing Blizzard and I could get my old band room back. So uh so then when Blizzard was practicing you know, shortly after they first kicked me out, I walked in and, you know, at their practice, I like, eat your shit, this is a possessed bathroom now. That is with us, that is with us. So it was like, started like partly out of revenge, yeah. partly out of getting Larry back into the band. So in many ways, possessed was a continuation of Blizzard, you know? Yeah. Well. Wow. Yeah. Larry Lalonde, who plays with Primus now. Yeah, Larry's from Primus now. There's a great guy, I like that. Well, wow, small world, huh? Yeah, well, we, we all grew up in Alpha Larry. I mean, it yeah. was, uh, her camera grew up right around the corner from me. I used to ride my skateboard to his house. You know, and it was yeah. Exodus and Primus and Possessed and fucking, okay. yeah, I think Lion T practiced at Green Day to practice. Uh, really? Fucking okay. uh, Outrage. Uh, you know, there was a whole bunch of people. Uh, Blind Illusion. Uh, uh, a whole bunch of people in the house, I have seen Kirk Hammett in a couple of interviews where he does mention and uh, talk a little bit about uh, you and Possessed. Oh, uh, yeah? What did, what did he say? Well, he mentions uh, you guys being from the same place and speaks well of Possessed, of course. Yeah, I mean, being used to that house and all the way we go party at that house. Like a big mansion. It's like this, like, raggedy mansion. And then, um, they would come over to our house and, and we'd party it. And, but we, we'd have parties at each other's houses, you know. And we, we, we'd always be at little D's and hanging out. But it's like, we're just normal guys, you know. Back then, nobody was famous, you know. Mm-hmm. But I mean, Metallica was always kind of really popular, but, but they were still, you know, Bay Area. You know? Absolutely. I've read and I understand, uh, Metallica grew super fucking fast in the Bay Area quickly, right? Now they're fucking giant. Hometown heroes, you know? Yeah. Same with Exodus, you know? Yeah, it's incredible. I, I seen Gary uh, out in Norway. We were playing at Tundra Rock, and uh, he walked all the way across the compound just to give me five backstage passes to Slayer and, and say what's up, and... It's so good to see Gary, like, I don't know, it's like, I don't know, it, it puts everything, makes everything grounded, like, no matter how big you get, like, you know, there's still people that you grew up with, you know, it's kind of cool, you know, it's kind of cool. 
cool to see like some of the biggest dudes in battle. Wow. Uh, just your homies for the Bay Area, you know. Good to hear there's some grounded and not big headed rock metal stars out there. Um Gary Holt, of course, being one of those down down to earth people, you know. I've read famous now because of Slayer, of course, and famous, of course, through Exodus. So Gary Holt uh, is uh, very down to earth. Wow. Yeah. He, he helped us get some of our, our, our first gigs, too. Like when we were in uh, Blizzard, you know, we were just little kids, you know. Oh, I yeah. used to say that he was our manager, you know. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because we were, we were younger. We were younger guys, you know. And so when we first first started gigging with Blizzard, we, you know, we were like 12, 13 years old, you know. And uh, that was one of the novelties is that we were like rocking out as little, uh, little ass kids, you know. Yeah. But when we did Seven Churches, Larry was still 15. Wow. I, I was 16, yeah. Damn, teenagers, huh? Yeah. Well, I wrote Burning in Hell when I was 11, you know, the really? lyrics. Really? 11? <laughs> Revelations of Oblivion Nuclear Blast Records, 12 tracks. It came out on May of 2019. Talk to us about the writing process. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I, um, the, the way that, uh, well, I can talk about the songs that I wrote music on, uh, like, um, I, I, the way I would do it is I would write like maybe between like um, seven to eleven riffs. I would I would just play them to this. I have this little Fernandes Nomad. It looks like a peanut guitar. Yeah. You literally just turn it on. It runs on the battery, and I just play it through my external mic on my um, on my um, laptop. And I would I would make a little packets of like seven to eleven riffs, and I would email them off to Danielle and. Uh, Danielle would sew them together, you know, and spruce them up. And maybe sometimes you'd add riffs, sometimes you'd just keep my riffs. And, and make them, like, into, like, a nice clean song. And you'd record those over a drum machine. And then you'd send those to um, Bobby, Robert, Robert, Bobby. And Bobby would take his software and record the bass. Record, or send it to um, Claudius and Claudius would do his solos and, and of course Dan would do his the rhythms and his solos and his drum machines initially and um, he, he would um, fly out to maybe let's mic up the drums replace the drum machines with real drums and lastly come to my house we'd set up a windscreen and a mic in my basement I would sing the vocals now we use those as um our demo tape we sent it out to a bunch of record companies and got it signed and then we actually took those recordings because it had a hidden clip track into the studio and used those as foundational tracks for the actual album mm -hmm. so instead of that way we don't all have to be there at the same time Emilio can go in and listen to it through the headphones in a click track and hear the guitars or whatever he needs to and re-record the drums in a big drum room the expensive drum room and then you know everybody could just kind of re-record over their individual parts and we can also use you know the the, the the vocals as triggers for the effect or the effects as triggers for the new effects and you know the way it goes now it's a lot easier digital so we, we save a lot of time and effort by using the, the quote unquote demo as the, the scratch tracks and the foundational tracks for the album yeah that's good we record the, the demo was all 10 songs you know so can you reveal uh, future plans for possessed for um uh 2020, of course. Uh, what are the future plans for Possessed tours, etc.? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, we have those three album contracts, so yeah. Um, I got a I got a tour in March, and uh, more and more we'll tour more and more of the new album until the album runs a cycle, and then <laughs> um, at the end of the cycle, you're just touring all new stuff. And yeah. um, you play that until you play the new album. You know? so it's all timing. You know, you don't want to do. You don't want to put them too close together. You know, because uh, yeah. you want down to run a cycle. You know. Is there something I didn't ask? Is there something I should have asked? 
So we'll be doing our first U.S. tour since 2010, you know. Before we wrap it up, Jeff, um, are there any words you want to uh, send your fans? Anything you want to tell your fans uh, via this uh, podcast? Yeah, well, I mean, it's good to be back. I mean, I mean, we've been touring for 13 years, but it's good to, to finally be, you know, you know, be out there where people are hearing me and, and finally get this new shit out. I mean, it was a long wintering and, and, and I've been dying to get some new material out. I hope everybody digs what I'm doing. And, you know, the first album is a warm-up. But uh, open the second one, you'll enjoy it more. And, you know, I'm, I'm just going to keep on playing until I can't play anymore. You know, it's just good to be here. Well, Jeff, you guys sound great. Your voice sounds great and powerful as ever. I've seen the videos on you know, uh, social media. Hell yeah. Awesome work. Keep it up, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We truly thank you, Jeff. We appreciate your your time chatting with us. Uh, thank you. Uh, keep up the good work. Uh, say hi to the guys and keep it metal. Thank you. All right, man. Okay, cool. Thank you, Jeff. That was our chat with Jeff Becerra of the band Possessed, the originators of death metal. Um, don't forget to visit them on their social media, blah, 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 this and that. Pick up Revelations of Oblivion, Nuclear Blast Records. Uh, online, you guys can pick it up there, download it, stream it, or something. Support death metal, support metal, support rock. Uh, my name is James. Thank you for supporting and listening to our podcast, That Metal Interview. Thank you for logging on to J Rock's Metal Zone. We truly appreciate it. And don't forget to visit us on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, Tumblr. Pinterest, Snapchat, and of course, CastBox, SoundCloud, YouTube, and all of the above. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Keep it metal. That metal interview.